Hello and welcome to another Gone Electric video. I'm Evan. Today you join me at a brand new EVGO station here in Seal Beach, California. So, my car's low on charge and I'm going to show you how to charge at EVGO. Hi, I'm Evan from Gone Electric. You know, I was just watching the playback for this video on EVGO and I realized that I neglected to tell you that I drive a Volkswagen ID.4 which doesn't qualify for EVGO's auto charge program. So I filmed this video as a person with an ID.4 who charges at EVGO but doesn't use the auto charge program. Now, if you don't know what the auto charge program is, it's EVGO's system where if you have an EV that qualifies for EVGO's auto charge program, that means you can go to any EVGO station, simply plug in, and walk away. No dealing with the dispenser menu to activate your charge. No dealing with the EVGO app to activate your charge. You can enable EVGO auto charge by going to the home menu on EVGO's app, tapping on vehicles auto charge, then adding your vehicle by searching or by adding your VIN. After you do that, the next time you go to EVGO, you just plug and play and walk away. And now back to your regularly scheduled video. Now here's the thing about this brand new EVGO station in Seal Beach. It's so new that there's no plug share ratings on it. So this is gonna kind of be a shot in the dark and hopefully everything works. The funny thing is that this station is almost right next door to my most local Electrify America where you've seen me charge a million times. So let's plug in and see if we can get a good charge going. At this EVGO station, um, there are two 350 kilowatt dispensers and then there's a couple 100 kilowatt uh, dispensers right around the corner, right there. Uh, I am parked out in front of charger named Severo. And the reason is because the other 350 kilowatt charger is down, according to the app, to the EVGO app. So uh, let's see if we can stretch the cable here, which seems oddly positioned. Uh, it actually, didn't quite reach my uh, my port when I had when I backed in, so I pulled the nose first this time, and uh, hopefully we can get it to, to stretch to the port. This has actually happened before at EVGO too, where uh, I have been unable to actually get the cable to stretch all the way to my port, no matter how I park. So uh, let's open the EVGO app, activate the charge, and see if we can plug in. All right, so we're in the EVGO app now, and. Uh, Let's geolocate ourselves. There we are. We are here in Seal Beach. We're gonna tap on that little circle that says four in the middle of it. And we are at the Chase Bank EVGO station. And you can see here that we're parked out in front of Severo. There's also Akira and Dorsetta and Rohan. Rohan is the 350 kilowatt uh, dispenser that is offline. So in order to get our max speed, we're gonna have to plug in, in, in Severo, into Severo. Let me say that right. Uh, my current state of charge is, I think, 16%. So uh, if everything works as it's supposed to, I should be able to reach about 135 kilowatts. Uh, however, as you may have seen from my previous videos on EVGO, that is not always what happens for me at EVGO. So we're gonna tap on Severo. We're going to tap Start Charging. And you can see the, the uh, app says plug in. And so we're going to do that. All right, so uh, this handle, brand new, and it's already beat to hell. The housing has already come off the top of it. Let's see if we can stretch it all the way to the port. Take the port off. Whoa, sorry about that, guys. Take the flap off. This is going to be really difficult. Uh, am I able to get in with one hand? Nope, i got to put down the phone. So I actually had to put down the phone because I couldn't one hand it, but I was able to stretch the cable just barely, just barely, <laughs> it barely got in. My port light is showing white. Let's see what the menu on the chart on the uh, dispenser itself says. It says connecting to vehicle. So when I first came here, I tried to back in to this spot and you'll see that I'm parked as far over to the right as I possibly can. To get the cable to uh, reach my port, I tried to back in first and it was really awkward across my back bumper and it didn't quite reach my port. So I had to pull in nose first. 
I mean, even in nose first, it barely fits. And uh, guys, I have to tell you that this has been my experience many times at different EVgo stations. The cables and the parking spots are really awkward. Okay, so it looks like our charge has actually started though. My current state of charge is 15%. We have been uh, dispensing energy now for 30 seconds. The cool thing about EVgo's dispensers, at least these newer ones, is that down here, if you tap on session details, it'll give you some good data. So right now it's showing that I'm being provided 324 amps. My, ba my uh, battery voltage is 367 volts. That's all normal. I'm currently charging out 118 kilowatts, 119 kilowatts. That's pretty good for a state of charge of 17%. Now, again, my max charge rate is 135 kilowatts. I rarely ever reach that. Usually I have to be below 10% to reach that. So at 17%, getting 117, 118 kilowatts, um, that's pretty good. That initiation was very fast too, that activation. Um, I'm pointing that out because a couple weeks ago, I charged at EVgo, also in, in uh, Long Beach. And although the charge went as expected, it took about three minutes for the dispenser to become fully active and start dispensing energy to my car. And um, in general, I've found that EVgo has not been great for me personally, for my car. I've had at least three or four times where I've actually had to leave EVgo because it just wasn't, wasn't giving me the juice. Um, if you go look back in some of my older videos, you can, you can see that happen. Uh, I've actually raided EVgo a couple times and it performed really, really poorly. However, <laughs> uh, two weeks ago, I had a successful attempt at EVgo in Long Beach. Two days after that, I had a successful uh, go at EVgo in Santa Barbara. Um, so I don't know, maybe things are turning around for me and EVgo. Maybe EVgo has strengthened their grid connection. I don't know, maybe they've put a little bit of money into things. I will say that I, I've, seen a lot, uh, I've seen a lot of new EVgo stations popping up uh, in our city, in Seal Beach and in Long Beach. So they might be having a little, a little bit of a push here. They probably got some money to do it. They've made a little bit of a push to install new charging stations around town. In general, you'll find that EVgo's are a little bit further off the freeway than Electrify America. They're more nestled in urban areas, more in town than, uh, than Electrify America. But that's actually a, not a bad thing because although you'll rarely see an EVgo station with lots of dispensers, usually there's like two or three or four, there's a lot of the stations. A lot, there's a lot more individualized stations than Electrify America. So, there is a use case for EVgo. And just a quick check at my car scanner app to see if uh, my car is getting the energy that it's requesting. You'll see to the bottom right where it says dynamic limit charging. That's the amperage that my car is requesting from the dispenser. It's reading at 311. And uh, in the toward the top there in the center, you see where it says DC battery current. That's the uh, amperage that the dispenser itself from EVgo is providing my car. And it's at 311 too. So that means that my car is getting the amperage that it wants. And you can see that the DC battery power window there to the right reads at 116 kilowatts. So we're charging at a charge rate of 116 kilowatts, getting 311 amps and my battery is at 373 volts. That is all normal. That's all typically what I see. And um, that's great because my car is getting the amperage that it's requesting. Let's so, uh, hop outside and check on our charge here on Severo. Currently at a state of charge of 34%, getting 290 amps, battery 376 volts, kilowatt charge rate of 108, 109. So charge rate's decreasing a little bit as we are increasing charge state of the battery, which is normal. We've been here for seven minutes and 42 seconds. Now, if I go around here on the corner, you'll see the other dispensers. There is a uh, 350 kilowatt dispenser right there. And then there's two 100 kilowatt dispensers over there. The 100 kilowatt dispensers are currently working, but the other 350 kilowatt dispenser is not. And the reason I'm putting this out is that, um, guys, this is a brand new station. I mean, I truly just saw it pop online on the app, uh, I think about three weeks ago. 
it became active. And there's another EVgo station that's, uh, it's been up, it's been built in Long Beach, about one mile from my house, but it still has plastic wrap over the handles and it's been like that for the last, uh, about a month. They still haven't fully activated the, the station itself. I don't know what's taking so long. Um, but the point is, is that, you know, it's great to build these stations, but it's pretty crappy when they can't get maintained. This station, again, it's been up for about a month or so, and already there is a fast charger over there, one of the four here, that isn't working. And that's pretty unacceptable. The other thing that I don't like about this particular station is that if I come over here, you'll see that the parking spot for Severo shares with the van accessible spot. So I'm parked in a handicapped van accessible spot because I'm trying to charge on Severo, which is really unfortunate for people in wheelchairs who need to park right here. I absolutely don't mind moving. I think it's kind of crappy that EVgo makes their parking spots like this. Somebody else made a comment about that um, at a different EVgo that's in Long Beach where they do the same thing and somebody in a wheelchair was blocked from accessing this spot because somebody plugged in their car and walked away. So if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna park in the van accessible spot to charge your car and you're not handicapped, then you'd better stay in your car because if somebody comes by in a van and needs the spot, then you better get out. So as I'm charging, let's check in on the EVgo app so you can see what the app looks like as you're charging. So I'm gonna go to the, uh, the menu button on the top left. I'm gonna tap that, brings the drop down menu where at the bottom it says charge in progress. I'm gonna tap on that. And it brings you to this window where it says your car is charging. It shows you how much time has elapsed. That at the very top it says 23 minutes. Uh, this is also a 16 minute session limit, which I actually didn't realize until right now seeing that. We will easily make that 60 minutes, but for folks in, oh, I don't know, solar charging cars, uh, Chevy Bolt comes to mind, Kia Nero comes to mind, and a few others. That 60 minute limit could be an issue. Right below that, you see that it displays your current state of charge, 65%. It shows you the estimated cost, $8.75. If we, if we tap that rightward carrot that's right next to the state of charge display, it shows you your charging curve, which I think is really cool. So you can see that we, we peaked at about 120 kilowatts. Um, and then it's been a pretty slow but continuous drop in uh, charge rate. And that's normal. That saves the battery long term, so that's okay. Th I, I, this is what I do like about EVgo, is that they show you some of the nerdy data that Electrify America does not. And it kind of just, I don't know, it makes me feel warm and cozy seeing all the numbers as they should look. So let's talk a bit about how to stop the charge. So we're nearing the end here, we're at 70% state of charge. Um, and my car is indicating that we basically have less than five minutes remaining on this charge. So then the question is, uh, how do you stop the charge? So on the ID4, you can do it from inside the car. I can just tap on stop charging right there on the charge menu. The other thing that you can do is that if I hop outside, typically at EVgo, you can also stop the charge on the dispenser itself. So on that menu right there, you can tap that and stop the charge. If I go to 80%, my car should stop it for me. So at 80%, my port light should turn white. And I'm not sure I should have to do anything. I think I can probably just unplug without tapping anything. But if you don't want to go to 80%, those would be the main two ways to stop either in your car or on the dispenser itself. You could probably do it in the app too. Um, I've never attempted to do that, but I'm sure that you can. All right, and we are nearing the end here. We're at a current state of charge of 79%. Here's our uh, basically near the end stats, delivering 153 amps at a 395 battery voltage, charging at a speed rate of 60 kilowatts. Took us uh, basically 33 minutes to fill from 15% to 80%. That's pretty darn good. Um, I really can't complain with that. And there you go, we hit 80%. I just heard my contactors and the dispenser contactors. Very good, port light is showing green. Let's see if it turns white or if it's just gonna be safe for us to unplug without it turning white. 
I said this in another video, sometimes you can still uh, unplug if your port light is indicating that you're still charging. Sometimes it's just a disconnect between the dispenser and your car. Well, it doesn't want to turn white, it's still green. Let's see if we can unplug. We can, pretty easily. Plugging in was impossible to do one-handed, but unplugging was easy. So uh, the menu kind of just turns, uh, it doesn't really, unless I'm missing it, it doesn't really show you like a summary page, like, uh, like Electrify America. Let's check the EVgo app. Okay, so we're in the EVgo app. It says charge complete. Uh, let's see, Did, has not updated my <laughs> battery level. I know I'm at 80%. It says final session cost, $11.55. Energy dispensed, 48 kilowatts, basically. Let's look at the detailed receipt. There we go. It shows you where you just charged at the Chase Bank in Seal Beach on Severo. Total cost $11 on my sweet, sweet credit card. Session duration was 33 minutes. And uh, that's about it. So that's it, guys. Sometimes it can be that simple here at EVgo. Uh, it feels like my luck is turning around at EVgo, quite frankly. This is now the third successful charge in a row. Um, lots of new EVgo stations popping up in urban areas, which is kind of nice. They're closer to your, they're likely going to be closer to your home if you live in a town or a city. So uh, I'm going to sign off. If you liked what you saw here, like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. <music>